Hello and welcome to the Z and Zed show. My name is Z. And I'm Zed. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about build or buy when it comes to 3D printers. Should you build your own custom printer from scratch or buy one outright? Or maybe a combination of both. So today we'll be talking about that. Uh, but first, why don't we get into some of the stuff we've been working on? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I have quite a few things, actually. I, I put some things on the list and I remember there were other things. And I think you have this too. I don't know if you have it handy. I have all kinds of stuff. Fixum Dude put out uh, a new model this week or this weekend. Uh, and it is this cute little bunny vase. Oh, of course. Like so bunnies. I did mine in the uh, Polymaker, uh, what is it called? Sovereign. So it's purple gold. Mm. Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. The dual color silks be perfect. Yeah. So there we go. And then of course these are Bugman and Fixum Dude tulips. And everybody's printing these. They're they're like the new sensation. So Fixum Dude, uh, we will, for the YouTube people, you'll have that link below. And if not, you can go on printables and, and find it or yeah. yeah. In Twitch chat. If so if someone wants to link it in Twitch chat, that's also you know, they're also free to do that. So we've got the we've got the fix and dude bunnies. They're really cool. Then um, these are the, actually very strong too. They're, yeah, he I did give, mine at point eight and it's a pretty good geometry. It's mm -hmm. it's like very strong. Yeah. He's cute. Don't try to break it, but and he's also going to work on one that has the head on top so you could it looks like a chocolate bunny and that oh, would be a great nice. use for intergalactic chocolate yes yeah i have some right over yeah. there somewhere all Wait, right so it. what was the other thing that i oh i have a couple other things here um i am actually on my printer right now i'm printing this but also this is uh cheese bacon did a really cool um planter hanger Mm. So you put a command strip on the back and then you can hang a little succulent or whatever, or you could just use it as storage somewhere like on your wall for something light. You're going to put yours on your fridge. Yeah. I bought some of some of these magnets. I have a variety. If you're starting mm -hmm. off in 3d printing, um, I would get an assortment of different size magnets. The standard are I think six by three. These are 10 by three or something. Mm -hmm. And there's 12 millimeter. And these work really well for integrating stuff into uh, magnets such as uh, Jano's mm -hmm. nozzle right here. I have one so on my one, wall. All I did was improve a slicer. I just made a void oh, that's right. roughly the same size as the magnet and I glued a magnet in. Can you see mine right there in the background? It's red. Yep. Yep. And then the, the other, the other thing that I did this, I, I did print it. I print everything all the time. So <laughs> but the other thing I printed this week, um, was by, um, it's, he goes by DSK001 on printables, Nando, as I know him, Fernando, who, uh, who you might have seen on Prusa Live, he, he works under his son's bed. He's got like a desk under the yes. bed. It's anyway, Nando's awesome. And Nando's always making really cool models and innovating. And he's, he started like developing these little clips, these connector clips. And so this is... This is um, from Cookie Cat. I think it's called Blue Dot. And it's a sample spool of filament. And of course, when you get a sample spool, you have to spool it onto something. But this is a super easy way to do it because you just drop it in and you and you click. So it's a great way I to... Like oh, there's a K, there's a K2 clip. Um, it's a great way to uh, have your, your sample spools. And this took... I don't know, six hours to print both both parts. Yeah, it's it's a I'm little... It can be a little bit more reduced in, in size. I'm sure you um, can play around with it. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. So anyway, Nando did this with his with the clips. I love it. Nando's great. So um, that's, that's another thing. Oh, yeah, and then I also did... Um, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of these, especially in the uh, all my dual... Uh, tone filaments these are fix them dude uh obviously the millennium falcon uh kit card and uh oh, this so is you, again in the sovereign that's one color right yeah it's one color yeah. i have done color swaps for them before but i really like them done in the in the dual color um Something cool and... about the dual color depending on the direction that mm -hmm. the the lines go you know if you're if your infill goes like this and then turns around does this it changes how the filament looks yeah Pretty significantly. So I'll be doing um, in my living room when I have a living room 
Well, I do have a mm. living room. So I'm going to do sort of a Star Wars wall. I've got all sorts of um, all sorts of Star Wars stuff. <clears throat> so I'll be doing a Star Wars wall and this will be the featured. Yeah, it's a neat effect. Fix and do. Yeah, I was able to see that on my little swatches that I did. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's that same one. So yeah. it's just every other layer, it changes color. I'm not going to get my great I'm not going to get my soldering tray. My yeah. soldering tray has a really cool effect, so I'll have to show that in a picture at some point. Yeah, yeah, dual color, very cool. I don't know what tricolor would look like that. I don't know if I've printed off my tricolor samples yet, but I'm slowly adding to my collection of. I gotta organize them, but my swatches in a, a <clears throat> nice container. Um, I like them because that what I showed you it shows mm -hmm. different effects. And it allows me to see <clears throat> the transparency effect of the uh, different oh. swatches. <laughs> that was a little obvious. For YouTube, you missed you you have missed a fun pre-show. You missed yeah, early. So let's catch people up on that real quick. So if you're watching on um, YouTube, what else is going on? This is on Twitch right now. We're streaming mm -hmm. live on Twitch. We're gonna take this and then push it onto YouTube. So there's no chat replay for that reason. And there is drop game going in the background for a little bit of extra interaction during the stream. So yeah, leave your comment we... down below if you'd like to participate in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have the link to the uh, Zombie Hedgehog Twitch channel in the description. And yeah. let me know what you think. Oh, also for people who are here right now, there is a giveaway. So if you take a look at the pin message, um, there there's a giveaway for some Polymaker filament. I think because it's a fun special show, we'll probably end up giving away two spools of filament. Two spools. Yeah. All right. You know, you can just pull one off my shelf, but you can't have my Poly Alchemy Elixir. Mm. You can have any yellow you want. Just pick the yellow. Mm. <laughs> but you got to tell me what color it looks like. All right. All right. Let's move on. So what else do we have? Um, makes. I am starting my Death Racer, a.k.a. Battle Racer for the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. Um, so this is the main chassis for it. It's big, but it's a little bit smaller than I thought, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a pretty good size. So these are the two main body pieces. I want to print these. And this is printed in Polymaker's new. You're not going to be able to see this on camera that well. But this is their new Galaxy um, ABS. I, I can't zoom in that close. But up in person, it looks really good. It has a nice shimmer effect when it's in the light. Mm -hmm. And it's subtle. So it's nothing super intense, but it's very subtle on the teal. When the other colors come out, then I'm expecting them to be a bit more vibrant. But uh, these parts were printed on my Voron 2.4. Awesome. Yeah. So you've got so, that built. You've got it running. I, I you, had a great, I it. you had a great anniversary stream, too. Yep. I we built it. We got to it. meet your wife. Oh, <laughs> and it's a tactile uh, tactile 3D picture or Matt German. Matt Matt's birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I'm not singing to you during the stream. Maybe in the after party. Stick around. Yeah, the after party. <laughs> we, we already had a pre-party, so mm. there'll be so, an after party. Yeah. But everybody in chat, please wish uh, please wish Matt a happy happy birthday. I printed off a bunch of parts. I'll have to see which ones are... I'm going to reprint in accent colors. I think this one actually goes in the front and should be an accent. No, maybe it goes somewhere else. Oh, I think it goes in the very front. I don't know. I'm just printing parts in YOLO. But... Yeah, I got a lot of these printed. The Voren's printing very nice and it's been very consistent. So I'm happy. Um, do you have any more prints to show off? I got one. Oh my goodness. Well, I have like a million. But okay. um, the thing, I, one thing I've been loving printing, um, I love a practical print. And I'm still doing the, the 3D printy, uh, the, the little boxes. And um, print more of those playing sure. with colors and stuff. And I gave a bunch away. Um, my friend came over uh, on Friday and I gave a bunch away. And I'm also still doing the new versions of the uh, the clock spring. The clock spring uh, mechanical heart box. So nice. that's that's a really fun. It's a fun make. So. Nice. All right. And I got this guy. So <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, this the best, is a the best, the best dragon of the year. Best dragon. Yeah, it's a pencil year. holder. This was scaled up about 150, percent I think. Uh, this was printed on my 
rebuilt simple core. I'll talk about that in the projects. But this is in Polymaker's Silk Red. And, oh my god, that that is a color. The Silk Red mm -hmm. that is nice. Um, I don't know why I didn't get it earlier, but uh, this model doesn't scale up the best. You need really good cooling. I had some issues in the chin, but printed on its normal size. I think I showed this one off last time, but printed its normal size. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty good. I like and that it holds one. It's well. cute. Yeah. Yeah. Little flower is a little flame with the metallic red polymaker. <laughs> Of course, this is Grant being eaten alive. Grant's in my freezer. <laughs> I, I left way? him in my freezer. Uh, head first, like this. Oh, he doesn't yeah. fit like that. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep Grant. Or Grant. the other way. This way's <clears> fine. <throat> I like that. <laughs> Perfect. There practical you go. prints. Yeah, we're... Very we're... practical. I'm everything, actually. In there. Everything has been practical. Everything. Everything has been has had a has a, a practical like purpose. So I think that's pretty much it. I probably printed off more, but oh, and I've also been oh. printing cable. I've been printing cable clips, but they're unreleased because someone decided that they're not releasing mm. the remix of clips. So I have these really nice cable clips, and if you can see a triangle, Ooh, I like, I like you might. That. Yeah, I exactly. Like well, I can share. Maybe I can share the model with yeah, you, sure but. It it will be ex oh it'll be exclusive to uh, to people who message us and ask us for us mm, for it I'll and put then we in have my to Discord. ask permission How's that for sound? it. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive okay. model. So if you want really cool cable clips, um, we'll have to get permission to share. So have you been working on any projects? <sighs> projects. Uh, aside not related from to the like, show. Not related to the show. Uh, if not, uh, I'm still I'm still working on the thousand percent Maker Deck logo. Uh, okay. Had a nice uh, message with uh, Andrew from 3D Gloop because I'm out oh, of awesome. Gloop, yeah, and crazy glue and stuff is not not cutting it. Um, and aside from that, uh, just oh, <laughs> I'm going to be doing some repairs on my my Prusa uh, Mark III. I have the thermistor and the heat sink wires. Both of them are a little bit in a dangerous, precarious situation. So I'm going to have to replace those very soon. And- um, Something I typically just keep stock, just like random yeah. stuff on my desk. Yeah, um, so that, that'll that be a project in the next little while because I've had some help. Um, a couple of people have helped me with that. And I think I'm also gonna just make sure I'm stocked up on parts. Uh, oh, yeah, actually. K2, you brought up something really interesting. Something I didn't know. Gloop, Gloop um, has is a sponsor of Zombie Hedgehog um, and also is generous to, mm -hmm. to Maker Deck and we're going to be working on some projects. Um, I asked a couple questions to Andrew because I Ooh, was wondering. Awesome. I was curious. So first of all, I am one of the lucky people that actually has like the Gloop storage jar. So this the is storage one. storage jar. Yeah. So it's actually a pressurized. See, there's a little thing that holds oh. holds everything down so this this was um at earth um i was i won i actually won one thing of gloop and i was given one thing of gloop at earth huh. i won it from the rep cord booth oh and so, it has your little they're packing stuff yeah in the bottom. and that's nice. that's like as the padding so mm -hmm. so this is really interesting um i was using gloop and i was talking to uh, k2 and he's like, what's this gasket for? And I'm like, I don't know, because it didn't look like it fit anywhere or whatever. So I asked Andrew, of course, and he said it's to identify the type of gloop it is. So if you look oh. on your, your jars of glue. Well, this one is gone. <laughs> oh, it's. That one should have gone. So but he said the green. white the white O-ring is the identification uh, band for um, PLA Pro. Um, PET is green, ABS is black, TPU is blue, orange is PLA formula P, which is the polytechnic. And also the other, yeah, I see a different color band. And he said, uh, the other question I said, I asked because I couldn't find it or we couldn't find it on the website. It is written on the jar-ish. Um, yeah, is, I wonder 
The best way to store kind, bloop. What kindness is? You know what kind of uh, bloop is? Pla. I can't it's tell. Pla. It doesn't have the, it's pla. the ring on it. It's pla. <laughs> pla. So, um, the best way to store gloop is in the hard plastic container I got back at Earth, as he said. He said, also, keep it cool. And he also said, a new cap is coming in the next couple of weeks. Oh. So, yeah, that's right. They're working on that. Pla. To help yeah, this is for shelf life. This is for Pla. Hi, Mighty Bean. Wonder, I'm glad you found your way over here. And Sierra. I wonder then, I have these like airtight containers. Mm -hmm. Like stuff that you'd use for storing, uh, they like stack for the pantry. I wonder if that's yeah. a great idea to use for, yeah. for Galoop. This one's really neat because it, it is the size of the, it is the size of the cap. So it sort of fits in there oh, and okay, squeezes yeah. down. So. Oh, so it's designed for it. Okay. Yeah. So I wonder if it's just keeping air out. Like, you know, I also think the temperature, or... the temperature makes a difference. Mm. I, what if you can add think, desiccant and... in there? Like what's the... Is it mm. the heat or is it the the moisture? I'm wondering. I don't know. So, Good something question. we can talk about in a future time, but that's uh, something you brought up, and yeah, there you go. And people store them in the fridge. That's recommended. But all right, wow, we are deep into this stream. Let me talk about my projects real quick. So on Saturday, I had a fun game on my channel. I'm the first person ever to make. A large, I'm probably not, a large Plinko board out of all PLA. Ugh, it's like this. Very impressive. Know. So, yeah, this is all done in Polymaker. The back that you can't see is a draft PLA. I color swap to white PLA plus Polyterra. And then all of the blue is the dark blue PLA. Uh, this took a lot of gloop, speaking of. This is mm -hmm. all glued together. Um, I didn't design it very well. None of the pieces really connect, and the whole thing is on a a white backer board, just like hot glued on. Oh, you did that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was at four in the morning. It, yeah, that's how this is actually staying together. So this was fun. I, do I still have the chips? I don't know. I do. I have. I have your. I have the the block. I, I have don't. your blocker. A blocker? Yeah, oh, yeah. I printed you, one. You printed one. Yeah, in, in orange silk. I, I don't know it. where they went. Well, oh, we're here. So the game works by putting at an angle. And let me know if you actually want this because <laughs> I, I can release block. it. I like I like what uh, Zombie's wife Stacy said. It was the zombie. It was the 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 truck and and the clip. And what did she say? The curse the cursed child. Yeah. And she doesn't even does she know about the K two clip? I I don't think she cares to be honest. <laughs> but she did but say it was the cursed child, so it was kind of cute. And she said it looked cursed because okay. uh, she knows about the swash trick. I've told her about okay. that. But yeah, it's a fun game. It actually works, and yeah, and you know, Chewy, won the, Chewy won a Rook. I yeah, won Rook. the loop that I'm that I'm sending over to Pink. Nice. And uh, yeah, so okay, so, so we actually do have a show. Mm, one more project. Uh, topic. One more. A one more project. One Goodness more. gracious. This is going to be called like. It'll be integrated chaos. into the show. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. Oh, okay. So, the, the, the idea for today's show. It's a cluster. Is, That's what it is. Okay. So, I will, I will, I'll start with my story and my decision process. Let's, let's okay. So, what's our, Briefly. what's our topic again? Do you build or buy? And there's different Pretty ways of building. Different. And, and of course, the, the, you pay for it no matter what. So, it was. Uh, picture this, Sicily, 1936. No, anyway. Uh, picture this, Montreal, uh, summer of 2022. Liz had a very generously uh, given a focus printer that worked sometimes and didn't work sometimes. And it was out of, out of commission. And I couldn't get the parts. So I was... Of course, uh, running Maker Deck 24-7, wanted to have a printer to be able to print. So I actually went into um, went into uh, Wexter's Hangout and said, my printer's dead and I don't know what to do. And so I had to decide a couple things. One was if I was going to get a Prusa Mini or a Prusa um, Mark III S. And then if I was going to do the kit or have it assembled. 
And in the end, I really wanted to have an experience where I just opened the box, took out the printer and printed. And that is exactly what I got, at least for the first couple of months. I've had, you know, no printer is perfect. Um, but that's, that's what I ended up doing. I decided to do the assembled, the assembled kit or the, sorry, the assembled as opposed to the kit, because I didn't want to have to, to think about anything. Now, if it was now, um, I probably would do a kit because you have the, uh, the ability to put, you know, put it together yourself. I've had to take different components of this apart and I'd learn more about the printer. So that's my, that was my decision process for that. Um, where were we talking? I think it was, it was in hot makes today. And I did say if the opportunity arose, uh, I would, I would build a Voron. I would build a printer. So I'm tempted at some point to, uh, to build a printer. Um, okay. now that I have, but now that I have the experience of, um, playing with a, um, a broken, like a printer that, that was kind of janky, the, the focus, and then, um, doing some repairs on the Prusa. Some of it was user error and some of it was anyway, uh, just, and also regular maintenance on a printer. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind building a printer. So, okay. Yeah, printers are a ton of fun. In fact, I'm going to change out the nozzle and mine while I'm streaming. Uh, so All right. From a 0.6 to a 0.4. So you started out with, uh, I believe, last week we talked about this, you had an Ender. Uh, yeah, it's right behind me, actually. I can actually mm -hmm. show it off today. <laughs> um, I was going to show it off last last stream and kind of go over a little more of my, my progress, but... And what was your better. process from going from a, a basic ender to the 7 million, the 7 million printers that you've played with? Seven million. In the Probably last like little seven while. plus a couple. Yeah. But you did. So, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I was very, very lucky to be part of a, a good community. Um, this was pre Maker Deck. I actually found Maker Deck via this community. This was the Void Star Labs Discord. Um, I was able to ask questions and a lot of people were able to give recommendations and suggestions for my printer, stuff to do, stuff not to do. It's still to this day is a very good resource as well. Um, just like coming in and asking questions. So I had a lot of fun hanging out there at the very beginning. One person, one day when we were printing off the Sanjay, um, the original tile mm -hmm. project, um, they were streaming on a maker deck and it was like like hey if anyone's you know they want to stream this you can go right on maker deck and and stream it it's pretty cool so i joined maker deck and now i'm here long story short but i was able to ask a ton of questions about this heavy printer <sighs> this is my ender 3v2 slightly upgraded slightly modded you know a few things have changed i think the frame is still the same mm -hmm. but everything else has changed <laughs> like literally everything else um, so the power supply is the same too, but everything else is new and it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience to upgrade it, to make it my own, etc. But I'll be honest, it had really good prints at the beginning. Very good prints. Um, I quickly destroyed my V wheels because I had them too tight. But other than that, like when it was printing well, it printed pretty damn good. It took a lot of tuning to get that way. Everything had to be very precise. The V-Bills had to be good. I didn't know anything about belt tensioning, so that had to be good. And then, of course, the profiles all had to be set up fairly correct. But I had a good experience, and I recommended the printer to just put everyone, like, Ender 3B2, it's a good printer, and you can upgrade it. But... Then I started getting into more of the custom printers, and that's mm -hmm. when it all changed. That's when my mindset changed quite a bit after realizing how many issues come along with a very cheap printer. Um, in my opinion, it's better to just build your own or take one and upgrade it or spend a decent amount of money and get a printer that's mostly upgraded out of the box. So I've stopped just recommending the cheapest possible printer. And when I do, I give the asterisk, 
hey, you probably need to change a few things over time, but it's good enough to get you going. So build or buy, that's the question. Building is a process. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways to build a printer. The two main ones are um, getting a kit like a Voron and printing your own parts for that, assembling it, or you can turn an existing printer like an Ender or like what I do and buy stuff off of eBay and fix those up. Um, I would consider that build as well. So mm -hmm. building is when you take a printer and you have to add stuff to it. Um, there's a difference between that and upgrading though. You can definitely buy a printer and do small upgrades, but mm -hmm. as soon as you're changing every single thing about it, you're essentially building a custom printer. Yeah. So it's, it's, I guess it's, it's the first, the first question is, do, for, I think a lot of people who build already have a printer. They, yes. They've had a printer that, that they, they have worked with, has been functioning for a while, um, whether or not they like it, but they have a printer because I think anyone that, that 3d prints, you always wish that you had one more printer to be able to test something out or to be able to print something different or, you know, all for all different reasons. But I think a lot of people that build, unless they're, they are, you know, advanced in building things, they would, um, they have a printer before they, before they build their next printer. And I think that's, that's definitely part. And part of the reason too, is that, um, you might want to print some of the parts for your new printer. So to be able mm -hmm. to, to have one printer, then you would uh, have another. I believe the concept of just buying a printer, like a Ender 3, mm -hmm. Prusa, uh, now Bamboo, that type of thing. I think that's very new in the market because the original printers, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were mostly built at home kits. Like these were all kit printers. Mm -hmm that you would have to build regardless. So there was no buy option. Maybe buy a pre-built kit, but there was no, um, you can't just buy a cheap printer. Over time, they started trickling in. I think that's when you got the ANA A8 and stuff like that. Uh, the fire starter? You, you see how that turned out. So the, the hit three at the beginning was a little bit rough in terms of both homemade printers and um, off the shelf printers, but it's slowly progressed to a point where now we're considering actually buying printers and yeah, it's a great experience. There's a lot of printers on the market that you can buy and have a good experience with. In fact, most printers, you can do that. Um, given you have to understand the limitations of the printer, mm -hmm. you're not going to be pushing a stock Ender 3 to, you know, a crazy fast speeds or getting very, very, very fine detail but you can get pretty close with a little bit of tuning and a little bit of TLC in general. Ginger, if you go next to my power button, I will. <laughs> yeah, so we had a couple comments here. Um, yeah, as RC says, when I get asked about a first printer, I go, do you want to just print stuff or do you want to work on the printer like a custom car? So yes. that's a very, you know, that's a very good point for, um, for that because when I, uh, when I got my printer the ender 3v2 I didn't have any intention of modding it in fact I kind of got it just you know like I get a lot of my stuff just because it was on sale it was very much on sale and uh I was like okay for the price I'll try one I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but I have a lot of stuff that I want to 3d print then I got into the whole oh wow I can add a micro swiss direct drive I can add the Kevin aka Sam dual z uh BL touch a new board, new motors, new bed, new frame, new printer. I can add new printer to my printer by printing it. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with a 3D printer. And I didn't really know that going into it. So And we're, we are both very new to 3D printing. Yeah, I just hit my one year uh, this month. ZNZ is That's on at question. 10 o'clock at night. It's been a long day. Sorry. That's a question for you. Uh, when you first got into 3D printing, did you even know about upgrades? Did you know that there was such a thing as swapping out a hot end or upgrading your printer to dual lead screws, etc.? I knew about maintenance uh, because 
uh, I was I was a mod. Well, I am a mod for Chris Perillo's channel, and he had the mini, the Prusa mini, and uh, we had to talk him. Well, I learned a lot because uh, be Krusty and Fixum dude, and I think maybe Glendon talked him through. Um, you know, even changing a nozzle at times yeah. for him. It, he's not a he's not a hands on kind of person, so they did have to do um, at least maintenance on his Prusa mini. And yeah, I th it was pretty much the first couple weeks of Maker Deck that I realized that um, when people were starting to add their setups and I saw that, you know, they, you might have an Ender 3, but it's got this mod, that mod, the other thing. And then I, I, I also immersed myself in uh, the whole universe of 3D printing. So, uh, right. but I didn't know that it was that much of a thing. I think I might have known about, yeah, I knew about like fancier nozzles, but that's about it. Okay. At the beginning. That's probably a good, um, I, we did some, some tips and tricks, but maybe mm -hmm. we should make an episode that's dedicated for, this is your first day of 3D printing. What do you need to know? Not mm -hmm. stuff that you should know over time, but what do you need to know? So um, we, we put that in the notes right now so we don't forget. There you go. I'm going to write that down. That's a good good idea. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, if you're watching live over on Twitch, put it in the chat. If you're watching in the future over on YouTube, hello, uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. We do this content regularly, and we'll be having more types of this content over on the YouTube channel. <laughs> you don't level your bed with a level. Uh, you can, actually. You can. <laughs> but you can't level your bed. Yeah. So uh, on this, yeah. Do you do do you build or do you buy? Um, so a lot of it depends on what type of consumer you are, what your personality is. If you if you want to tinker, if you have another printer, uh, and also what what amount of time do you have? Mm, um, yeah. For example, you just, Voron? yes, you built a Voron, and how long do you think it actually took? So it took me six streams to get to the point where it is. And off stream, I had to print the parts and I had to pre-assemble and organize the parts. So let's say around 20 hours of live streaming it, plus around um, an extra six or so hours. Let's just say about 30 hours of, of full assembly. Um, wow. So it's recommended between 30 and 40 hours for the Voron 2.4. And that includes tuning and getting it set up properly easily, easily 40 hours. But that's it, it's a hobby, right? You a lot of people will dedicate time to their hobby. Maybe it's every day, maybe it's every week, a weekend, you know, a weekend at mm -hmm. three to five. I'm doing my hobby. So if you have enough time and consistent time to work on a project like a Run, it might take two weeks it might take two years i know some people that are still working on their voron and the revision history of the release they're working on a kit that's no longer even supported it's an old 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 version so you have to dedicate time there's some stuff like let's say the rook 3d printer something that's designed <clears throat> sorry right there <laughs> that's designed to be kind of more of a quick build i did that in four hours on stream with a little bit of prep but that can be done in the whole day. So there's a lot of levels and different time. <laughs> yeah, John. <laughs> That's true. Um, my, my secondary hobby is watching people stream and work on their 3D printers. It's very inclusive. Um, we have uh, Nero, Modbot, Steve. Those are the, the primary mm -hmm. 3D printing builder streams that I watch over on YouTube. Um, they have people like Grant who talks about 3D printing and like the business side of it. So there's a lot of extra stuff that I do when I'm not building a printer. So I'm always learning. Oh, way too much, way too mm -hmm. deep into this. And I can't, yeah. it's like, the, it's a too deep in, I can't really get out. So I'm stuck. Too much yellow. Not enough uh, yellow. Never enough yellow. Yeah, so those are, I guess those are, those are all the different factors in, in deciding if you're, if you're going to, to buy something outright buy a kit or sort of build with all, all of the components. And um, 
I guess you also have to think about if you're going to build um, part of the part of part of building is knowing what you want to build. So there are all different options for for building a printer. Um, all kinds of options. Subsector actually has a Franken printer. You know that she that she that she had all these different parts and and put together. Um, or you do something like uh, a Voron, uh, or you even you know if you're going to build from a kit like a, a Prusa. Um, so th those are the those are other things that you have to take into consideration. Um, because if you have something where you're going to have to source all of the materials, um, even with the Voron, you can buy you can buy a kit, but you could also shop around or or go all over the place for um, for for those parts. Correct? Yeah, you can do quite a bit in terms of kits. Uh, I'm, my general recommendation is if you're just getting into this, if you're trying to see if you want to build or buy. So I have one 3D printer. Do I buy another one and mm -hmm. use it? Or do I use my existing 3D printer to make the parts for another one? Because uh, you have that luxury, you already have a 3D printer. If you're just getting into it, I very much strongly encourage some type of good, well-rounded kit. Um, one of the better recommendations is a LDO kit uh, from one of the Voron types. So those are over-inclusive. It's more than you need to get it done. There's all kinds of extra guides, etc. That's probably the most detailed custom printer kit you'll get besides a Prusa. You can always go for a Prusa MK3. That's also a kit build. You have to assemble the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You get rewarded by gummies. <laughs> Except for me, I'm allergic. Mm. They're yeah. good. Um, if I would have had one. I just buy the gummies. <laughs> so yeah, those are your main two options. Uh, less than chat if you know of any others. So there's Rat Rig. Um, I'm not familiar enough with them to know how easy the guide is. Mm -hmm. So there's Rat Rig, uh, Voron, Prusa. What other kits are there that are... Uh, we call it BOM in a box. So it has everything you need in a box and you get sent. We're waiting uh, what was to the see. Thing you, what was the thing you... Uh, oh, uh, RC had a question. Yep. Do you leave your working 3D printer stock or do you modify it? Oh, Micron is another one that someone suggested. Uh, is Micron a pull kit though? Because uh, there's a lot of partial kits. We can mm -hmm. talk about that real quick. There's a lot of modded printers um, and partial kits of printers. So you can buy the major components, but then you still have to source stuff like wires and um, some additional things. They're close. Okay, so some there's some kits. So Fabrico has a lot of those types of kits. Um, uh, West 3D has a lot of those kits as well. You can buy parts of printers. And then Sparta is a great source. Want. Sparta, if you're in Canada, or if you, if you want to get shipped internationally. Um, it's all kinds of options for partial kits. But for a beginner, beginner, I do recommend a full BOM in a box, as we call them, kits. Everything you need to get going. Uh, Rat Rig or not BOM in a box, okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. So yeah, we can talk about modding. Why don't you hmm. talk about your modding experience? Uh, my muddy you experience. Quite a few, actually. <laughs> so, well, for the for the focus, um, I do have my own uh, my own like fan guard thing that Fix and Do printed for me. Um, I believe I changed the the blower. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I um, took the glass bed, put a magnet on it, and have a flex plate. Um, I have attempted to install the um, the BL touch. That's still a work in progress. So I still have to, oh, but I still have to level the, level the bed. Um, on this one, I have not changed the springs, but the uh, on the other one, I did change the springs for silicone spacers. And- I swap them out, can't you? Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, I think the other thing I might like to do at some point is um, even change the, the knobs for leveling the bed just to make them a little more fun. 
on the Prusa, um, I, oh, and I also printed a new spool holder. That's, so that's a mod. Because yeah. the spool holder for the Focus yeah, is way stock. too, is way too narrow. Way too narrow. So printed a new one. Um, and what else? So for the Prusa, um, I did have, uh, I've had three blobs of death. So that means all of the filament got clogged up all in the, you know, around the nozzle and everything. So yep. um, I do have to, I, like I, I, I did say before, I have to replace the thermistor and the heat sink wires. Um, those are that, that I'm in, I'm in the process of doing that. So that's a modification. I did use a nozzle X for a while, but I've swapped out for a brass one just to see if that makes any difference. I was having some issues with clogging, but I have taken it apart a few times. I replaced the fan and oh, I, I always modify the, uh, the knobs because why not? I don't like the, uh, I don't like the Prusa triangular thing. Kind so, of uh, I was actually very jealous of, uh, I was on printables and I saw that, um, Kevin had designed some knobs for his, for his ender. And I was like, Oh, I really want one with, with the, the bird. So Anyway, I, I have a bunch of different, I, I swap them out every once in a while. So I have, um, I have I like custom that. knobs. Also, uh, Papa Bear created a knob that's got the Maker Deck logo on it. So yeah, so I swapped out the knobs on the Prusa. That's my modifications for now. Okay. That is pretty extensive in terms of, mm -hmm. of 3D printing. Now, 3D printers themselves require regular maintenance. There's a lot of stuff uh, like the wheels that be replaced and or tensioned um, your bed surface eventually probably needs to be replaced the nozzle probably the hot end eventually uh, maybe at the whole hot end though um, that's generally people replace their nozzle like that's very common and if they break them the cables but a lot of that is pretty basic and doesn't require a ton of 3d printing knowledge hmm. so there is a fine line between or kind of a blurred line between just maintenance and upgrades like what do you consider an upgrade versus just regular maintenance probably if you're changing the design that's uh, mm -hmm. an upgrade or a mod that's the probably the best so upgrading your hot end to change that out that's a mod um, or even but, if you want to change, yeah, change the color on the Prusa. There's yeah. a lot of 3D printed parts, and if you wanted to change the color, that's, that, that's um, not really a mod. That's, that's it's, yeah, it's it's like a, a I call them decorative mods. It's a different yes. category. It's like those functional mods that actually change how your printer works. But if you want to change your hot end to a to a Revo, for example, um, yeah, there's I guess the, it, and depending on the type of the type of printer that you have. Um, what is the, you can change the extruder. You can add another on the ender. You can add another, um, rail. Correct? Yeah. It's, uh, some of the enders are LTC. single Z axis. LTC. Yeah. And you can add a secondary lead screw or convert to belt to Z like I have on this one. I strongly recommend that kit, the Kevin AKA Sam kit. Um, I think it's available on DFH.FM now. So they have mm -hmm. those like in stock in the U S otherwise Pouge has the kits on AliExpress. Okay. And they're very much worth it if you have Ender or Ender type printer. But the question was, do you leave a working 3D printer stock or do you mod it? If you have the luxury, leave it stock. That's going to be, it's, it's weird to think about it, but that's when it's going to be working the most consistently. Now, if it's a bad printer to start off with, it's not going to magically turn into a good printer. Yeah. But if it's a decent printer to start uh, over time, you can keep it decent and the chances of adding mods onto it and increasing the print quality is about equal to decreasing the print quality because once you start changing it and I start changing your slicer and start changing other variables and the more variables you change the more chances you have to kind of messing up the quality in your printer um, I mod for fun I work on printers for fun I rarely work on a printer and get better print quality without extensive okay. tuning and extensive modding. Like there's always oddities, even this belted Z, it works great, but even this belt, 
like the the belt keeps coming off because my holder is a bit jank. I have to reprint okay. that, um, and there's still other minor little things I have to do. But yeah, like little John says um, down here, I love modding, and that's a hobby in itself. Mm -hmm. Modding printers, working on printers. Like who needs to print stuff when you can just tear it apart and rebuild it? Like I Lego. always, I always have to have one printer that works. That's that's my right. thing. There, you know, there has to be something that that fully functions. Even if I don't yeah. have them both running at the same time, one has to work. So that's that's sort of my rule. I think of printers the same way I think of Lego. You have a bin of Lego. You can build it into this magical city with cars and stuff and play with it, or you can build something, tear it apart, build something, tear it apart, build something and go through that cycle. And they're very, they're two very distinctive ways. And that's exactly what 3D printing is. You can build one, buy one and print with it. Or you can print occasionally and then tear it apart, rebuild it, upgrade it, um, do different things. So that you can, you can pick whatever you're more comfortable with, but always have a working printer. Number and one also, rule of 3D printing. Yeah, and the other the other thing to be aware of is the warranty. If you have a printer that mm -hmm. um, is that you spend a significant Actually amount of money on and has yeah. a warranty, then you want to be careful that you're within that period before you start, you know, past that period before you start um, playing around too much. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing to, to keep in mind. Um, and also what what the warranty um, what the warranty does does and doesn't cover if you make modifications. So, yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. great point. Yeah, I so I think, I think, I think if anyone has any questions, we do have people live in chat. This does yeah, go on ask, YouTube ask later. But if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to add, then uh, this is the time. And we'll, we'll sort that out. So what I did recently was I had my simple core. This is again, mm -hmm. my big, um, I can't take it off, but. It's, it's this size printer, so you can imagine that. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's technically 330 millimeters build volume with a 350 plate. Um, this has been kind of my project printer. So what I do is I get it working. I get working enough where I'm able to print stuff like ABS reasonably well. Mm -hmm. And then I work on other printers and get those working using this one. And then once I have a printer or two that are reliable enough, so like the Ender, I use to print off a lot of parts of my Voron. But now I have a Voron and that so far has been pretty dang reliable. Like I just printed off these two without any tuning or anything. I just built it and essentially hit go. I haven't even tensioned the belts yet. <laughs> so now that I have that printer, I'm taking apart this one and back to the beginning of the stream. My project is installing CAN bus on this. Um, maybe I can actually show you. So on here, look at that. I oh, now have wrong layout. Ah, I'll sorry. There we go. There we go. We're learning. Yeah. So this is my tool head little bit wobbly but we'll fix that this is an eva 3 on the simple core and i added this can bus board onto it i actually did it last stream i went through the configuration and today i did my first test setup of it and that's when i printed this um you know this big dino guy Ooh. but that was a mod that i was only comfortable doing after i had another working printer because what happens when I mess this up? What happens when it suddenly stops working for some random reason? I need a backup printer in order to fix it. So um, that's what I did recently, and that worked out fairly, fairly well. Oh, geez, where was I frame right here? <laughs> Lower. Ignore me. You can. There you go. Oh, you have to sort of. Uh, how do how do we sort this? There we go. There we go. Uh, no, we'll do it like this for a little while. Ah, where's my scene? <laughs> Did I not save it? It was a special Z and Z scene. Aww. Oh, it's it's over here. But I have to. There you go. <laughs> Little jank. Oh, then we got to go. 
There we go. People are going to be dizzy. Crush fingers. <laughs> so we'll leave it like this. So Ash says, can you give a concise definition of a CAN bus and how they work yeah. and why you would want one? CAN bus is a way of adding a remote board to your printer, uh, but control it using only four wires. Four wires. So you have your power, positive and minus, and then your data, plus and minus. So it goes back to automotive terms and automotive. Um, it's used a lot in cars. You have a CAN bus and each device has an address. It's kind of like a, think of like a USB port on your computer. You plug stuff in, they have each individual serial addresses. Same thing. So I have a tool, bo tool head board, as you saw, and that's connected via CAN. So it's using that configuration. And the cool thing about CAN is that it's four wires to connect. Let's drop everything. And you can use a cable like this. This is, I guess, chain flex. So it's a it's actually a six conductor, but you only need four of them. And this whole wire is your entire tool head wire. That's it. Just this. And you can have all kinds of stuff like a be all touch, hot end, um, your extruder. It powers your extruder motor. So you have no additional wiring for your extruder. So it does every single thing that's on your tool head end stops everything. So it's essentially just another controller board, right? Like this is on the bottom of your printer. And then you have your can tool head board on top. And why you'd want it is a to simplify wiring. It's a lot easier to wire up this than it is to run, um, this mess of cables that I had to use on the the simple core, like that was a pain mm -hmm. having to trace back every single one and plug it in. Oh, such a nightmare. So it's changed a lot of the configuration. I don't uh, have anything to I think I think I'll let Zombie answer. Can? What do you think of can? <laughs> uh I'm just gonna look at what people said. It's kind of like a serial network. It's yep. how all the electronics in a car communicate. I have yep. a CAN bus on my Ma and my Mazda. So there you go. There's, there's the answer. No, I, I'm, I'm learning. See, I'm learning yep. as, as, as I go along as well. Alternatively, on my Voron, I have a tool head board, but instead of a cable like this, I have a pre-terminated uh, kind of wiring, wiring um, harness instead. So it has all the the 20 cables, but in one connector, essentially. So mm -hmm. you plug in the one connector, and then on the other end, it has all of your like spaghetti that you connect into your controller board. So, so that's Brixie Nixie. Brixie yeah. Nixie is actually someone who's very new to Maker Deck and has jumped right in and is helping uh, with with uh, in the studio. So thank you, Brixie Nixie. Mm. Um, you have joined awesome. the, the group of uh, of weirdos, as, as we discussed earlier today. Um, the exclusive, the exclusive club of Weirdos, apparently. Um, but you do have a question. Does uh, Canvas introduce much delay between the motherboard and the tool head? And also That's everyone, cool. yeah, thank Brixie Nixie and and welcome, welcome Brixie Nixie. And um, as we've said before, Maker Deck is for everyone and everyone is welcome. Especially so I don't, I don't know how the individual boards are synced up, but in Clipper, you can connect as many MCUs as you want. So I can have one of these and I can have another one of these and I can have a third one of these all plugged in and um, I'm guessing just to guess that the latency is negligible in terms of um, the different boards being synced up but I don't know that's a good question and that's something that's far beyond the scope that either of us can cover but the general consensus is that it's good enough So there we go. There's mm -hmm. an answer. Um, yeah. So I think we pretty much covered covered the, this topic, and hopefully people on YouTube um, will will get something out of this. As but as as we uh, mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, we both feel a lot more comfortable when we're streaming with Twitch. It's probably some sort of mental block, but also the format of Twitch um, we find a lot more accommodating. 
Um, and we also have a built up audience here. Uh, we will be putting this onto YouTube. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. Um, and that will usually be the, the next day um, after doing a little editing and making sure that we have all the show notes in. And then it gets extra visibility because when it's uploaded, people who have notifications get notifications of the upload because 10 o'clock at night, Eastern isn't always the best time for someone to watch the NZ. Right. But we, we already have twice as many people in here tonight. Um, this is also on Zombies channel because Maker Deck is to feature all of our makers as as mm -hmm. much as possible. So that's that's what that that's for. So yeah. So maybe and give us your feedback as we're yes. running through this experimental phase. Would you consider this a good way of getting other channels kind of involved with Maker Deck because they can do a segment like we're doing here. Uh, this is not the regularly scheduled programming. Mm -hmm. Um, you could do something like this, record it, and then put it onto the Maker Deck YouTube. So we can have different sources of content and then kind of concise them together. I kind of like that because it puts mm -hmm. it gives the it puts the the audience kind of where they naturally are instead of having them go over to YouTube. And it and, also fulfills yeah. what we want to do with Maker Deck, and that's feature other people, other channels, other, other programming, other ideas. Um, yeah. we have, we've even discussed having, um, podcasts play in the background on maker deck. We're trying, still trying to figure out the logistics of some of those things. Um, we are, you know, a, it's basically a volunteer, a group of volunteers who are trying, you know, trying all these things out, but we really want to, to share what people are, are doing. And if you have something you'd like to add, then you get the opportunity to stream it on your own channel um, and also share it with Maker Deck. So I think this is yeah. this is as as we as we uh, as we get you know grow as as we um, as as everything progresses with Maker Deck. This is the kind of stuff that we want to do. It's not just you and me, and you know, yeah. And but Brixie Nixie did just say. Anyone can join and stream, or if you want, just tune in and zone out with the mesmerizing printers. So that is over on Maker Deck. Um, yep. And of course, uh, and some, yeah, and sometimes it. like very early in the morning, we have, um, we have uh, uh, an armorer, he comes in. Uh, we have Paul spinning bowls. And if you ever want to do any other type of making, you're more than welcome to come in. If Even if you want to build Lego, we had some sewing, sewing patches. Definitely. All yeah. anything, anything that's that's some form of making. You're welcome to do it on Maker Deck. So it just so happened that Maker Deck turned into kind of a 3D printing deck mm -hmm. of sorts is because it's easy, right? You hit go, you point your camera at it, and that's all you have to do. Uh, I mean, there's more. But you still mm -hmm. should, and I require you to yeah. watch your own printer. Um, you can use Maker Deck as a secondary source of kind of watching but definitely also, yeah some like people what it is yeah and some people stream their printer on maker deck and on their own channel too you're not restricted so uh, keep in mind with that not something that will continue you know reminding people yeah no sound and you can be 3d printing and still interact in the chat in fact that's the really nice thing about maker deck is that like when i'm streaming i gotta talk to the camera uh, I, I have to go and go, go, go. You're always on. But if I wanted to more, let's say I'm building a printer and I didn't necessarily want to talk to chat 24 seven. Well, I could stream it onto Maker Deck. I could be building a printer and then, um, you know, just someone has a question, they can at me in the Maker Deck chat. And then I could do that. And I'm a lot more focused versus doing this where you get very distracted <laughs> very quickly. Pop up yeah, the wrong people, comment. <laughs> yep. People have been building uh, different printers on Maker Deck. Uh, in fact, our last giveaway with the Voron that was built on Maker Deck. That was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And Gourmet Crepe did did uh, his Prusa while streaming on Maker Deck. Krusty's worked on things. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're, so finally allowed, we're finally allowed to say that there has been a Prusa XL on Maker Deck. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned <laughs> for, for even more extra large um, printing 
uh, visuals. Extravaganza. <laughs> Extravaganza. Big, big, big but pictures. he, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Sh- sh- yes. we didn't know that, but then we did. But that was then a beta Prusa. That. Yes, that was the the beta Prusa XL, and mm-hmm. the one that the one that's going to be production. Um, we will see that soon too. Awesome. Yeah, this is a big printer. It's it's mm-hmm. the bed's at least three fifty. It's almost the right size. Yeah, Prusa is gonna be a big. That's gonna be a big printer. Oh my god, it's the same size as this. Um, yeah, that's that's big. <laughs> All right. So for the people on YouTube, we are going to say um, thank you for watching Z and Z. And for the people on Twitch, we're gonna stay and talk to you for a little while and be a little oh, more goofy. Idea. We'll do the draw after. Yes. There we go. Okay. So, gotcha. uh, thank you for taking part in today's Z and Z. If you're on YouTube, please like and leave a comment. Talk about your decision with your 3D printer, and if you have any suggestions or questions, uh, put them put them there, and uh, we'll make sure that they uh, get featured on a new on on a future show, or that they're uh, they're answered directly. And let us know how you like this format. It's a little bit different. We changed up a little bit every time mm-hmm. based on user feedback. And just let us know what you think. Let us know if you'd like to see a different change. If you like the drop game, uh, if it's too distracting, let us know. We want to take your feedback into consideration and apply it. So that being said, um, this has been a great stream. Thank you all for tuning in live. We'll have a bit of an after party on the stream, but for YouTube, Goodbye. Eh, whatever. After party. Woo! We did it, chat! Woo-hoo! We could say whatever we want now. Yay!